Welcome to Soda Lake Wildlife Habitat and we are going to share some of the most amazing free boondocking sites that we have found here in this area outside of Pinedale, Wyoming. If this is your first time, I'm Kyle. I am one half of the Wandering Shores. My wife and I have been traveling for over four years now and we boondock 95% of the time and we like to provide as much detail and information about free camping around this country as you can possibly ever need. So today, Soda Lake Wildlife Management Area, I will be taking you on a tour around the lake. I will show you the drive in and all the way around. I am going to do this one slightly different. At the very end of the video, if you want to watch the entire loop around the lake to kind of see where you might be able to find your best spot, um, I'm going to leave that entire segment at the very end of this video, so be sure to check that out. There's a 14-day stay limit, and there is no unauthorized human presence from December 1st to May 1st every year. This is a wildlife feeding area. There's draft horses, there are elk, there's a bald eagle that we've already seen, there's uh, osprey, loons, um, there are antelope. What you see behind me is Willow Lake Road. That is south and it's about seven miles into the town of Pinedale and that is north that heads you actually over to Willow Lake, but we are gonna be on Soda Lake. Um, this unpaved road starts about maybe a quarter mile outside of town, and I will say it's one of the best dirt roads that we have ever driven. Um, but it is seven miles north of town, so if you're not comfortable driving on remote dirt roads, you're probably not going to do a whole lot of boondocking, but this is seven miles till this pin. Now, I am going to pin this exact location, which you can tell from the Willow Lake and Soda Lake signs. This is where you wanna make sure you route. There is a wildlife viewing route that kind of takes you as a shortcut over to the lake, but um, I would highly recommend you not try to pull a camper on that. It's extremely thin and extremely washboarded. So this is where you wanna uh, make sure you route your GPS so that it doesn't route you down that other wildlife viewing loop. Um, it's beautiful to take a vehicle down, but not, not an RV of any size. So I'm gonna take you in now to the free camping. Um, there are pit toilets scattered around the entire four mile loop. And uh, I'm gonna tell you about some of the other resources and uh, show you some of the best campsites. All right, I'm gonna take us into the camping area coming up the main road here, and we're gonna to come to a fork in the road. You'll see a pit toilet straight ahead. Um, I highly recommend that you turn left and go clockwise around the lake. There are some small little arrows indicating that that's the ideal way to go, I'm assuming. It doesn't necessarily say it's one way, but uh, if you go to the left, it will allow you to have your door um, on the lake side if you decide to camp directly along the lake. So I'm gonna turn left here. There's an informational placard over there along with the uh, one of the outhouses. I'm, gonna, I'm doing this as I hold the camera, so uh, there's a little bit of shakiness, that's okay. This road is actually in pretty good shape. There's a little bit of washboarding in it, but not bad at all. You can just take your time. So basically this is a four mile loop around the lake. And again, as I mentioned earlier in the intro, I am going to do the entire loop, um, the video of the entire loop after the end of the informational session where I go through all the resources that are available in the area. But we're gonna go clockwise around the lake this time. Do you enjoy free camping and boondocking across the United States? Well, we've got a lot more for you. If you haven't already checked out thewanderingshores.com and we have an interactive Google map there where you can see all of the spots we've done campsite reviews of as well as things to do in the area. So check us out. Over here, you're going to see a big barn full of hay. That is for the winter when they feed the um, elk and the antelope in the area, as well as utilize the draft horses that kind of run wild around this area um, to pull the sleighs full of hay out to the remote, more remote areas of this wildlife habitat. 
You will also get some free range cattle. We haven't had many since we were here, but you can definitely see uh, indications from the wonderful cow patties that are around the area that they have been allowed to roam, roam wild here. So this is the first main road and you can see there's an outhouse down that direction. There's about two spots down there um, and I'll show you all of these with an overhead view as well as a little bit of drone footage I was able to take from the camping site that we chose. You can see us across the lake there. There are a couple pull-through sites along this side of the lake. There's one right there. It might be hard to see with the brush, but you'll be able to see the other one when we come up to it here on the right-hand side. There's another one right there that has a fire pit. Most of the designated campsites do have picnic tables and fire pits already at them. However, unfortunately, it looks like some people have just kind of made their own site and piled up some rocks for a fire pit. Uh, but the entire time we've here, been here, um, most of the sites have been empty. Now, for a point of reference, we are here in the middle of September of 2024. Temperatures have been wonderful, 60 to 70 during the day. And we have gotten down as low as the low 30s at night, but it quickly warms up. Here's another pull through site that has a picnic table and fire ring. Our friends over at Broken Dreams Reborn had camped in that location uh, two years ago when they visited the area. We're gonna come back around and we're gonna show you the area that we chose. And then I'm gonna take you inside and show you an overview of the entire boondocking area, as well as all the resources that are available here from propane to mail to water to dump, etc. Oh, and groceries, of course. All right, I'm gonna take you back to our boondocking spot. We have our own little private road. Obviously, you can tell there are actually four of us, uh, four campers back here. This, this road back is little narrow so you got to be careful of you know rubbing your uh, the sides of your truck or your rig on this on these bushes but this is a nice wide open area almost like a little peninsula all right I'm gonna take you inside and I'm going to give you an overview on Google Maps of the resources available in the area and then don't leave at the very end of the video I'm going to play the entire loop um, not you know, it's a four mile drive. I'm not going to play it for like 20 minutes. Um, you know, I'll kind of fast forward through it, but it'll give you an idea of some of the sites that are available around the entire lake. And so you can pick out one that you think you might want to go to first, but just remember, route yourself to the pin that I'm going to drop in the video. All right, everyone, we are inside now, and I'm going to take you through some of the resources as well as show you an overview of the boondocking area here at Soda Lake. Um, for point of reference, this is the state of Wyoming. I'm guessing you probably know that if you're watching this video, but Pinedale is here just probably about two hours away from Grand Teton National Park. And I've got a lot of different things kind of highlighted here that we're going to go through. But let's first start with the boondocking area. So as you zoom in, um, we had talked about the fact that this road from down here in Pinedale straight up to the boondocking area is about seven miles. You're going to see that I indicated a heart right here this is going to be the area that you're going to gps yourself to so that you're not going down the wildlife uh, loop with your rig and then you'll be able to turn right now i have highlighted with you know flags and a heart and stuff some of the 
boondocking spots, but by far there are far more than I've highlighted here, but I just want to talk about a few of these. I'm going to zoom in on the satellite map to give you a better idea of Soda Lake. So as you're coming in, you saw in the video, we're going to come in the entrance right there. You're going to turn left onto this road. If you go right, you can go down. Um, there's a pit toilet right there and there is a few boondocking spots here but in the video that I showed you we are going to take a left here and traverse around the lake the first right hand turn you're going to get to is going to be a loop road that leads you right there that is the barn that I showed you with all the hay in it there is a couple boondocking spots down here let me get that out of the way right there's for example one um, there's you know a little bit of a loop here but if you continue on down the road as we did in the video, you're going to come around here. There's going to be another pit toilet right there, as well as two or three boondocking spots. We veered and we stayed left, came back around the lake. You're going to see here, here's a couple pull-offs, or I mean pull-throughs that are available as well. There's one there, there's one right here that I highlighted in the video. We decided to camp around the corner here and we're right where the heart is so as we were coming into our boondocking spot we were coming this way we then made a sharp right turn and came back down here you can see in the video or i'm sorry in the satellite image there's already some rvs and trucks here and it looks like maybe a boat but there is a picnic table and fire pit now as you continue around the lake you're going to see some more boondocking spots there there and then there's going to be a little road that shoots off to the left here um that you can turn on and this takes you back towards Little Soda Lake. So if you look back here, this is Little Soda Lake up here in the corner. Um, there are two nice boondocking spots right here that are not necessarily obviously on the water. And then as you traverse back a little bit, there's like a gate right here that you can go through or a cow, cow grate and there is a nice spot right there. This road, 757, back to Soda Lake, is Jeep and ATV only. It is extremely, extremely rough. Um, you could walk it or, or go on a bicycle, but you're not going back anywhere near Soda Lake with any type of rig, um, unless it's a side-by-side um, you know, -side or something like that. As you come back around the lake, you're going to see this is a beach area, sandy beach. There is no camping directly on the beach, but you can see there is a couple boondocking spots right there. Um, you come back around. Uh, our friend Brian stayed right there um, where that campsite is. The nice thing about this campsite is, granted, you have potentially people right ab across the road from you, but this area right here is where the antelope are often spotted the draft horses, as well as the eagle. The bald eagle likes to sit up here on these rock formations and perch. Um, so this is a kind of an overview of the lake and all of the boondocking spots. I would say there's at least 20 to 25 spots at, at best, or I mean at most, um, around the entire Soda Lake. There is a, some boondocking over here on Willow Lake. We did not go check that out, so that's not gonna be part of this video. Now, I'm going to take you into... T oh, wait. Before we leave, let me show you why I'm routing you to this location right there with the GPS. If you just use Google to Soda Lake Campground, it's going to want to take you past this cow grate right here and make a right turn onto the wilderness, um, scenic wilderness area here, uh, wildlife air loop and come back this way because it's actually a shorter distance but this road is extremely thin extremely washboarded um, and i would not take your rig on there so definitely use that gps point now let me take you into town show you some of the services that are available in town so first and foremost foremost groceries you've got ridley's right here um, fairly nice size grocery store. Prices are fairly reasonable. It is attached to an Ace Hardware as well as an Amazon locker. This Amazon locker, at least while we are here, is often filled so you can't typically easily get something shipped there. Um, so just keep that in mind, but that is the grocery store. Then if you want to we highly recommend, and we used Moosley Mailboxes. Moosley Mailboxes allows you to have packages delivered there of any size, and they charge you by the poundage. 
So I think for anything under five pounds is a dollar. Check their website. The information is on there or give them a call. Um, super great people and highly re recommend them. And pretty much all of us that have been here at this campsite have used them for all of our mailing services. Then as you go into town, there is another hardware store. The reason I've highlighted the A to Z hardware, which is actually called uh, Hardware Hank now, is they sell propane. So if you're looking for propane, that's one option. The other option is a little bit further outside of town at Valley Wide Cooperative Energy. They do sell propane as well. Um, both of those have a space where if you have a drivable RV, you could pull up next to the propane tanks and get them filled. So that is very helpful for people driving, you know, class C's and class A's. The other place um, that I want to point out here is Rocky Mountain Car Wash. So let me zoom in on the satellite and show you. Rocky Mountain Car Wash obviously is a car wash, but this building right here is a laundromat. And back here is a city-run water and dump station. So as of September of 2024, water is $7 for up to 150 gallons. And then I think it's a $2 for another 100 gallon after that. And the dump station is $15. And they do take credit cards. It is potable or potable water. So, you know, that is where you can dump and get water for a reasonable price. The other option is give Yellowstone RV Park a, a call. If they are open, um, a lot of times they will let you fill up for a small uh, fee or dump potentially. So uh, we did not use them, but we would, um, you know, we do know that they do allow that. So let me back back out here into the standard mapping. Again, we went through groceries, we went through mail services. There is a postal post box here. I'm sorry, post office here in Pinedale if you do want to do any type of general delivery, but we didn't go that route. Um, we will highly recommend Wind River Brewery. The food is fantastic. It's a little expensive, but you know, you're in a small town with a captive audience, um, and it's nice to, uh, to have a good food option as well. Um, the other thing I want to mention is that as we talked about in the very beginning of the video, this is a wildlife habitat. And from December 1st to May 1st, every year, there's no humans allowed on property unless you work for the Wildlife Foundation or, or you know, etc. So remember, they're closed December 1st to May 1st. Other than that, there is a 14-day stay limit. And we highly recommend Soda Lake. Um, it's about you know, maybe two hours from Grand Tetons National Park. So, you know, you could, in theory, make a day trip of it if you wanted to. Um, but yeah, we love our time here at Soda Lake. Now, don't forget, before you leave, I'm going to play the entire loop video around the lake to give you a better idea of what the all the sites look like. So if you're interested in that, I know I've had people say that sometimes when I um, insert the drive into the beginning part of a video it's a little bit difficult to watch that as well as watch the information that i'm providing on the screen along with it so and last but not least give us a thumbs up subscribe hit the notification bell we love to boondock we love to do campsite reviews and we are aiming for 10,000 subscribers by the end of 2022 or 2024 and we're hoping you can be part of that as well so thanks again Stay after to watch the entire drive around the lake.
boondocking across the United States, well, we've got a lot more for you. If you haven't already checked out thewanderingshores.com, and we have an interactive Google map there where you can see all of the spots we've done campsite reviews of, as well as things to do in the area. So check us out. 